Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break it down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got a lot of stories about Bitcoin and FOMO going on. First up, MicroStrategy targets 400 million additional capital raise and tends to use proceeds to buy more Bitcoin. And this is a good story, but what's an even better story is the same CEO saying that anybody who bought Bitcoin before March of 2020 is a visionary. That means somebody just like you is really doing the right thing. Also, new data shows that Bitcoin is seeing massive inflows from institutions and gold is seeing mammoth outflows. And this is a good piece, but really it falls a little bit of flat when we take a look at the details. Also, this is a follow-up story from yesterday's video, Standard Chartered Bank to launch crypto trading for institutional investors. And this one goes pretty deep and it's going to lead us into what Brian Brooks said that in the next four weeks, we're going to see some really big and positive news related to cryptocurrency and banks. And lastly, just an important note for anybody who is participating in the XRP airdrop, just know that if you have your XRP at iTrust Capital, there's a couple of things we need to go over on top of some bummer news also put up by iTrust Capital about crypto staking taxes. But before we get into all that, let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So today it is December 8th, about 3.30 p.m. El Paso, Texas time. And uh, we got a little bit of a dip, a little bit of a pullback, and this is healthy, this is normal, this is exactly what I was waiting for. And I know there's some people out there that are like, dang it, I really wish it would just keep going up to the moon. And I remember when I was coming around in 2017, I just remember, would hear the YouTubers, they always tell me like, ah, oh, this is great, it went down a little bit. I'm like, are we looking at the same thing? It kind of, it, it just kind of unnerved me, but now I get it because I've been in for four years now. I'm just dollar cost averaging over all this time, it's doesn't really make a difference. I'm actually happy when it goes down. I'm happy when it goes up. So Bitcoin's down uh, almost 2% for, for the week. Uh, Ethereum is down 4%, and that actually took a big tumble. We were at 610, 618, now we're at 566, so a little bit of a, of a drop. So that's good for me. I mean, this is uh, these are my days. XRP down 5%, watch out. Tether's tether, nobody really cares. Well, maybe one person cares. So for you, that you care, that's great. Uh, tether's at 19.7 billion, almost at 20 billion. Love to see an audit on that. Litecoin down six. Let's see. Uh, let's just say it. Uh, everything's down. Top 20, everything's down, down, down. Uh, yeah, pretty crappy day. What can you say? Now, let's take a look at the all-important Bitcoin factor. So if you would have invested in these alts, you would have been ahead of Bitcoin. Uh, yeah, <laughs> stable coins and nothing. So that's what's going on in the market. Let's jump into today's top story. So first up, I saw this story all over Twitter, and Twitter is really what I, where I get a lot of the information. Everything kind of goes, goes faster on Twitter. You can just send a tweet super quick. It's not like you have to do a video or, or write up an article like this. So when I see this, I'm like, I, you know, maybe everybody has, has seen this, but there's the next story we're going to talk about, I think, is the bigger story. But So this is what's going on with MicroStrategy. MicroStrategy is going to buy $400 million extra of Bitcoin, and I think they know something we don't. That's just my assumption. Not only that, but they have the inside track on a lot of things. If you don't know, Coinbase was the one that helped them really skewer the market and to uh, accumulate Bitcoin without raising the price. And again, I don't take anything away from that, but uh, I think Coinbase is uh, really focused on institutions, and that's just how it is. So real quick, uh, the company revealed, MicroStrategy revealed on Monday that it's planning to sell $400 million in convertible senior notes, debt securities that can be converted into the issuing company's shares to qualified institutional buyers only in a private sale. MicroStrategy will then use the proceeds from this sale to purchase more Bitcoin. So like, hey, we want to get rid of this worthless stuff that we have, and we're going to take $400 million, you know, half a billion, uh, not too bad, and we're going to go, you know, buy Bitcoin because that's just what we do. This was the official announcements. announcement. MicroStrategy intends to invest the net proceeds from the sale of the notes in Bitcoin in accordance with its Treasury Reserve policy pending the identification of working capital needs and other general corporate purposes, blah, blah, blah. Really what it means is this. Michael Saylor has convinced everybody from the top down that Bitcoin is the way to go and is the only way to go. He has been talking about he is not going to give it up. He is not going to sell. And when I see something like this, I'm like, this is, of course, bullish news, obviously. But the, the real question to me is, what does he know? What does he know that we don't know? Because I know there's a lot of things that are going on in the background that we will never get privy to. So we kind of have to look for clues and see what's going on. And this is a big clue. So this is a great article, but this one really touched home. And 
all this time that you have been ridiculed and you've been talking to your family and Thanksgiving just came about, Christmas is coming up, and you're going to be talking to them again. I guarantee you're going to be saying something about Bitcoin if they don't shut you down. And uh, this is the type of story that I like to see because it just gives us like another affirmation like, yes, I knew this is where it could go. I knew what could happen. I feel that this could actually be a very big thing. I believe this is going to be bigger than the Internet in the uh, late 90s. So this was a, there was a fireside chat between uh, CZ Binance and Michael Saylor. And this is what he said. And I thought it was great. He said that he would have hardly entered Bitcoin so easily prior to March of 2020 and the Black Thursday that pushed Bitcoin down the charts 50%. He states, all the work was done before me. And he, when he gets into it, he really talks about how like he had to be convinced and convinced and convinced until people just beat it into his head that Bitcoin was the way to go. But then when he got it, it was like a light bulb just turned on and he's like, oh, I know exactly what it is. I know exactly where it's going. I know exactly what we need to do. And I think that's kind of like the thing that we need to talk about to our friends and family. And if you haven't clarified your thoughts on Bitcoin, go ahead and check out my video on the Bitcoin elevator pitch. You can find it at my 100% free website, danteachescrypto.com, and it gives you everything you need to know to pretty much clarify your thoughts so you can tell people and not fumble over your own words. Anyhow, Sailor states that he is standing on the shoulder of giants. He specified that all the work to convince him that Bitcoin is a suitable inflation hedge was done by the OGs, the old gangsters, the people that came before him, the people that were into the industry a long time ago. And he stated this, getting getting into Bitcoin before March would have been visionary and courageous. So when you look around and you think to yourself, am I doing the right thing? And because it just seems like some days, and believe me, uh, even I get like, like this some days, I'm like, man, is this the right thing? I always feel like it's, it is the right thing. I know it's going to happen. The real question is, you know, when is it going to happen? When you see articles like this, though, and uh, you've got a CEO of a multi-billion dollar company, and he's going headfirst into Bitcoin, and he's making the right choices, and there's everybody behind him going, you know what? I want to be that guy doing what he's doing, and I want to bring my company back from the brink and make these huge profits. I think it just says something to, you know, where you and I are going where we've seen things and what we could potentially be so that's what i have for that that piece uh, let me know what you think in the comment section let's move on next up uh i love these articles by alex he's a great writer but uh this one fell a little flat i'm going to explain why so uh bitcoin sees massive inflows from institutions and gold sees massive outflows so what do we got so according to CoinShares data published by international news agency reuters 1.4 billion of institutional money has flown into Bitcoin focused investment products over the past few weeks. Uh, by contrast, gold has seen massive outflows of 9.2 billion during the same time. So when we look at this, we're like, wow, 9.2, but that's a lot of money. Not. Nah, it's, 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 it's really, it's a drop in the bucket. I mean, just our entire, our entire market cap of cryptocurrency digital assets is a drop in the bucket at $560 billion. And it's the thing that I always talk about where I see, you know, all the world's money in a visualization. Just real quick, everybody's seen this a thousand times, but here's a square. It represents 100 billion. So if we get down to gold, this is gold. This is all the money in that is in gold. It's actually at almost 11 trillion dollars. So when we start to talk about, you know, nine billion dollars, that's nothing. That's just nothing. Now, it is over a couple of weeks. Who knows what's going to happen in the future? But again, it's a positive thing, but I see that it should be accelerated at some point. And then just so you know, looking at all the money in the world, uh, there's this one thing that I always like to bring, uh, make mention of, derivatives. You know, like options and futures and swaps and things like that. That's where the money is. And uh, tokenization of real estate and all those good things. So when we start to talk about gold, I mean, even if we capture 25% of uh, gold's market cap and we're at, you know, $2.5 trillion, that'll mean that Bitcoin will be a around $120,000, $150,000 per Bitcoin. I can definitely see that. But this is a good article, but again, falls a little flat. It's just, it's a start. That's all I will say. All right, let's move on. Next up, Standard Charter Bank to launch crypto trading for institutional investors, sources say. And we covered this yesterday where the CEO had talked about that cryptocurrencies were in inevitability. It was going to happen, so he just couldn't see any way around it. And I was like, well, that's kind of interesting. Another, another big banker. Uh, talking about cryptocurrency. So, uh, you know, we'll, we won't hear anything from him for weeks, right? Well, very next day, here we are. Same guy, same, uh, there's another source who's saying, nope, uh, there's a lot of things going on. So what's happening? Well, Standard Charters, well, first of all, if you don't know, Standard Chartered 
is a British multinational banking and financial service company headquartered in London. Operates a network of more than 1,200 branches and outlets across more than 70 countries. Employs around 87,000 people. So it's a pretty big player in the banking industry, we can say. When they talk to other banks and, they try, and they're starting to get them into the game, their voice carries a lot of weight. And what they've done uh, is they've taken five of the biggest OTC or over-the-counter traders and four exchanges and will include an Ethereum-based settlement token for their trading group, which is pretty impressive. Uh, the firm involved in the custody and trading projects include LMAX and ErisX. So Standard Chartered plus five of the biggest traders in digital assets and four exchanges are about to get this new model started. Says a source, says a source, I think the first test trade will be next month and I'd say it'll end up involving the 10 biggest exchanges in digital. So that's pretty fast. I mean, if you think about it, banks are not known for innovation. They're really not known about getting uh, their their tail in gear. And here they are, you know, they've already met with people, they've already done all these things, and they're gonna actually do this by next month. Now, I will just say this. Nothing happens that fast. Nothing happens to where like you had a meeting, you're like, let's do it tomorrow. This has been going on for a very long time. I can guarantee that. How long? I have no idea. I don't go to those meetings, but uh, I can tell you that uh, these bankers that are getting together, they know where things are going and they want to be a part of this ride. So this was the interesting part about settlement tokens. So the settlement token used in Center Charter's crypto trading platform will be based on an ERC-20 standard. So they're going to create a whole new token, obviously, but they chose uh, the Ethereum platform. And it's like I've said, if you don't know what to invest in, just invest in Ethereum because everything's built on that. And here's another, another uh, key factor that uh, bankers are like, you know what? We don't really know what's going on, so we'll just build on ERC-20, Ethereum base. Crazy. A lot of people were pushing to use Hyperledger, Corda, but we have specifically gone for something the native crypto community are comfortable with, the sources said. We are building our own token of fiat collateral and hoping that will become the equivalent of Tether. If they could become the equivalent of Tether, that is a huge market cap. Uh, let's see if they can do it. Except the tokenized collateral or money will be held in the trading bank account of a proper bank, like a Standard Chartered, a JP Morgan, a Deutsche Bank. And this is the problem with banks. They only know how to do things their way, which kind of makes sense, right? I mean, if if you're an old institution, you're like, well, we do it this way, and we and we and we make settlements, and and, and we have accounts, and there's physical processes, that works in the in the old world, right? But for what it is right now, I think they're kind of missing the boat about what it is. But again, banks aren't really known for innovation. Let's be honest. So if this works, I mean, so much the better. But I think it's going to fall very flat. So Standard Chart has been working on this for a long time, obviously, and is generally working with other giants in the crypto space. I wonder who that could be, Coinbase. This is extremely serious and not some proof of concept. They have passed all the checks and compliance and are bringing in some exciting names. Big banks who once shunned crypto are fast warming to the idea because they don't want to be blockbustered with Spain's largest lender, BBVA, said to be launching a digital asset custody and trading offering out of Switzerland early next year. And this really just plays into the part of what we heard uh, the czar of OCC, the Office of the Comptroller of Currency, Brian Brooks, where he stated this little nugget. New regulations by, by the end of the Trump term? I think you're going to see a lot of good news for crypto by the end of the Trump term. Some of it's going to have to do with banks connecting to blockchain. Some of it's going to be more clarity around the nature of these assets. So believe me, there's going to be very positive messages coming out. What he just said right there. We're going to have a lot of good news, and it's going to be about banks, and it's going to be about the process or what cryptocurrencies are and how we define them. So he pretty much just gave you right there. And he said this is going to happen by the end of the Trump term, and we are coming up to that. Unless you believe he's going to win win some kind of like uh, lawsuit and uh, is going to get everything overturned. Sure, maybe, I don't know. But, uh, I mean, the time frame still stands, all right? So three to four weeks. And that's what's going on. And I could just, I mean, if we kind of put the pieces together, I mean, everything that, that's that's happening, I mean, gold losing, losing out to Bitcoin. You got the micro strategies, the big institutions coming in, the Drucken Millers, the Paul Tudor Jones, the TD Ameritrades, the Fidelity Digital Assets. I mean, you can kind of just see what's going on in the background. Now we got all these banks who are really 
in my opinion, they're FOMOing in. And I think they are the ones that are going to drive adoption of cryptocurrency. In the beginning, it was all, you know, anarchists and libertarians. And then it became people like us, the speculators. Now I think we've got that third phase, which is these institutional investors. I think they're going to pull us over the big hump and put us into the stratosphere. I could be wrong. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on to our next piece about uh, the Flare airdrop. So, Flare airdrop. Uh, if you use iTrust Capital, uh, I have to tell you that there is something very important that I want you to miss out, and that is that this, that there is going to be two snapshot dates. So if you have your XRP and iTrust, and iTrust only, I'm not talking about anything else, I'm not talking about Celsius, I'm not talking about Voyager, I'm not talking about Coinbase, I'm not talking about any wallet that you have, just iTrust. There are two snapshots. One is December 9th at 4 Pacific Standard Time. And the second one is the Flare Network snapshot. So the first one was for iTrust to kind of get their works in order. And then two days later, on December 11th at 4, that's when the Flare Network snapshot date is going to happen, or December 12th, 000. So I've always said this. Just give yourself two or three days and don't move it. Just leave it there and you can get the airdrop. Now, just so you know, you will not get, it's not a perfect one-to-one. -one. They're going to, the, um, flare airdrop is going to be leaked out in percentages so it's like 15 to 25 percent or somewhere around there and then as time goes on then q1 2021 they're going to leak out a little bit more and then then q2 a little bit more so you will not get all your spark airdrops all at once so don't go complaining to the exchanges uh, especially coinbase they <laughs> they got enough to worry about over there uh, because you're not going to get everything and then on top of that you, you don't know if the exchanges you have it at, if they're going to actually list uh, Spark because they have to go through the whole rigmarole of seeing if it's actually going to be qualified. But it is it is amazing how Spark wasn't really covered by anybody like three, four months ago. Then all of a sudden it's like everybody's like, yep, we're going to do it, we're going to do it, we're going to do it. So I, I have to tell you, I got to tell you, I got to tell you, I, I think it really comes down to the strength of the XRP army because they were like, you're going to do it. And you're going to make sure it happens. And guess what? It happened. And that's the beauty of coming together and everybody actually having one singular voice going, do what we want because you work for us, not the other way around. <laughs> Anyhow, that's how I see it. So there's that. And there's also a little piece here on crypto staking. I'm going to link this in the description. But just so you know, uh, if you're staking in any way, shape or form, the rewards that you get are also taxable and if you don't want them to be taxed and you want to try to minimize your taxes i'm not saying to avoid taxes or you know escape taxes we're not al capone we don't try to like get away from our taxes uh there's a way to minimize that and you can use that in itrust capital it is a crypto ira so if you have an old 401k a 403b a tsp or anything like that or you want to start a brand spanking new ira then uh, go with iTrust Capital. There's a link in the description. It'll give you one month for free. And also there's a video about why I personally use iTrust Capital. But again, just so you know that if you're going to be staking and getting rewards, those are also taxed, which kind of sucks. It doesn't kind of sucks. It sucks. And that's a bummer. And also a uh, quick update on the uh, D News Cardano staking pool. We are at uh, 2.3 million. So uh, that's pretty great. We did this in less than 24 hours. And uh, just so you know, the saturation point is uh, 63 million. So we got a ways to go, but uh, I mean, that's massive uh, for, for, for that. So thanks for trusting uh, us with your, with your staking. I, I hope to, uh, fill this pool up and start another one and then uh, we will go from there also there's gonna be some exciting news uh looks like we're gonna be doing some things with uh charities and other stuff like that so uh, i will let everybody know also starting the 14th of december we're doing the 12 days of christmas that's just what i call it but we know it's something different but uh the 12 days of christmas yeah we're gonna be doing a lot of giveaways so uh 2020 let's be honest sucked which <laughs> just a crappy year so what i want to start the next year off right so let's just do some good things and what we're going to do is every single day beginning December 14th all the way to 25th we're going to be doing some pretty big giveaways so the first day it's going to be stone books I'm going to give away four uh, shield folio or stone books uh, and it's going to be super simple I'll just show up watch the video make a comment and I'll draw four names easy peasy uh, on the second day we're going to do nano ledger I'm going to give away two nano ledger X's on day three it's going to be those extra premium leather wallets with the with the tracking inside and uh, those are just the first three days I've already got it all the way lined up uh, through the 12th day and I gotta tell you uh, it's massive so I'm going to say thanks 
to all the suppliers out there who I reached out to, and they all said yes. I was, I was like flabbergasted. I'm like, great. And uh, let's get this thing started off right. So I'll begin the 14th of December. I'll let everybody know. I'll remind everybody, and we'll go from there. So that is it. So thanks for sticking with me through all of these stories. I really appreciate it. If you like these types of videos, there's going to be two months going to pop up on your left and right. I'll let uh, YouTube do their magic. I'll see you on the next one.